and welcome to yet another special circumstances uh, video review uh, we're taking a look at the other offerings or a couple of the other offerings from Enforce uh, military lights uh, these are some of probably their entry-level offerings these are the, the respectively the 6VX and the 9VX uh, this is a two cell CR123 light and this is a three cell uh, rough specs right off the bat 200 lumen max output and 300 lumen max output. So, similar to the other Enforced lights, these use a polymer body. This is a carbon fiber reinforced polymer. Um, the color is ostensibly described as black, and it, it kind of looks mostly black in the video, but it's actually more of a um, sort of a, a dark gray. Um, pocket clip comes mounted on it. You can see there's a, a hole right there where you can put some paracord through for a lanyard. Uh, this is a pretty decent pocket clip attached with two screws. Um, these are hex screws. I would have preferred to see Torx, something a little more low profile perhaps, like a button head or something like that. But the, the clip is actually quite nice. It's a nice bit of tension. Um, This is something that's unique to the Enforced Lights. We looked at this briefly in the Weapons Light one, but this is more pronounced here. Um, this is actually what you can see through the slots here. This is the heat sink. And this is a, a patented feature of the Enforced Lights. This is exposed to the air, and this is one of the reasons why they can get away with doing a, an all polymer LED light. Um, and also, what, what explains the remarkably low weight on these very compact little light. I have usually about a medium sized glove here. Um, two cell, decent output. This uses a what's called a total internal reflection optic. Again I'm not entirely sure which LED they're using. Um, it seems decent. has a good nice white beam. Um, similar interface to the weapons mounted light in the sense that you have two outputs immediately available like that hold it in it's momentary tap it it's a constant on tap it quick it's strobe okay um, this is something that's kind of unique to the enforced lights in general this is something that comes back all the way back from the end of the days before they launched the enforce uh, series and that is they load the batteries in with the negative pole towards the front of the light. That's opposite to pretty much all other lights out there. But, you know, you get used to it pretty quick and it doesn't really... It's not hard to figure out, really. Um, and the inside here, you can see the whole barrel inside is, is metal. And you can see the contact down the bottom there. And this is, again, similar to the Enforce light. This is a spring-loaded contact. The cells protect the batteries against recoil, and these are weapons mountable. Um, these are designed to be used with primarily the um, the Enforce mount, uh, which is a quick release mount. Uh, but it can actually be used with pretty much any standard one-inch mount. Um, you'll see a picture of that in the text portion of the video as well. Um, tail cap, pretty low-profile button. Uh, tail tail button is is not guarded. It is, however, exceedingly stiff. Um, this is something that seems to get a little better with use. Um, now this is, by the way, also ultrasonically sealed, just like the WML. And just like the WML, these are guaranteed to 66 feet of waterproofness, or 20 meters. Um, anyways, back to the button. It, it really is quite stiff. Um, it does get better with use, like I was saying. It loosens up a little bit, but it's very stiff. This is both good and bad. The good part is, it kind of protects against um, accidental, you know, accidental discharge of the light, um, like you know, pushing against something that comes on. It takes quite a bit of pressure to actually turn it on. But the drawback is, of course, that it takes quite a bit of pressure to turn it on. So if you're not all with it, you might struggle with it a little bit, especially when the light's new. Um, that being said, I, I do generally like these lights. Um, I actually like the three cell better than the two cell as far as just ease of carry in a pocket. 
like clip to a pocket. This clip is, by the way, meant to be compatible with Molly webbing, and it does slip in quite nicely into the webbing and holds the light fairly securely. Um, but if you put this in a pocket, the thing with the two cell light is that when you look at the center of gravity on this light compared to the center where the clip is, well, there's a lot of light sticking out of the pocket compared to how long the light itself is. You know, this is like a third that's going to be sticking out of the pocket. It may be over a third. Um, and that means that it has a tendency, if your pockets are kind of loose or, you know, your pants are kind of loose, to sometimes flop out or want to, f to, want to flop out of your pocket. I haven't dropped it yet because it, it still stays on the pant, but it kind of just flips out, flips out. And you could definitely lose the light very easily that way. Whereas with the three cell version, well, you can see how much of a difference that makes. You have that extra bit of length and the bigger head, and that changes the gravity, the center of gravity on the light. So that that becomes a lot more easy to carry. So I'm, I've actually taken to carrying this more than the two cell, despite the difference in size. One thing that I also like about the three cell that I found out that you can do, I like using rechargeable batteries. Unfortunately, these lights are not compatible with something typical like, say, an 18650 lithium ion cell. And you could potentially use, um, you know, like a, a, a three volt rechargeable lithium ion, you know, two of those. What I found was that this light will take two of these 17500s. Pretty handy. Rechargeable lithium ion, the output appears to be pretty much the same. And now I can use rechargeables in it when I'm using it for everyday use, which is what I prefer to do so I don't, you know, use a lot of money up on buying, you know, CR123 batteries. Um, a couple of differences between these two lights. Obviously, you can see the reflect the well, the optic, not the reflector, is larger on the three cell. The head itself is also larger, and the exposed area for the heat sink is again larger. That comes with the probably with the required um, the extra need for thermal dissipation from the higher output LED. I would not be surprised if this is actually using the exact same LED. Um, just pushing it harder as far as output goes. LEDs today have so much range as far as that goes that that's something you can really get away with quite easily. Um, just looking at the uh, tail cap again you can see the, the threads. Threads are polymer. But they seem to work quite nicely. These again are very smooth. Um, mechanically this is a, a really nice light. And now one other difference. You can see the kind of crenellated bezel here on the two cell, this is hard plastic. You can kind of hear that, right? The three cell, on the other hand, well, it's rubber. So it's, well, it's still kind of hard, but it is soft. You know, I don't know if you can see me deform it here with my fingernail, but there you go. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, but at a guess, I'd have to say that they did this because of drop safety. This is a heavier light. If you had the hard polymer bezel on it, it might actually crack. Um, this is so light that that's not very likely to happen. So I can kind of see why that they would do that. Um, overall, I do like these lights quite a bit. Um, I would like to see a little bit of a change in the pattern here. It does provide grip, but not a whole heck of a lot of grip in the longitudinal direction. You know, something to break it up and, and sort of help secure it in the hand better, especially when your hands are wet, you know, or you're tired or whatever. You know, that would just be nice. Um, not strictly necessary, but it would be nice. Uh, the light does work in its in its form as this, and the, the grooves are actually meant to interface with the weapons mount they make. Um, I would like to see a slightly better or slightly easier to push tail cap. This is just a little on the heavy side. You know, but they work. Um, I've been using this quite a bit here lately after after Inforce sent it to me. Um, they're also well priced. I mean, these are both under $100 for either one. Um, 
if you have GSA, then they're probably going to be even cheaper. I haven't actually looked at the pricing, but given the disparity in price on the weapons light, uh, they should be quite cheap. Uh, again, made in the U.S., Emissive Energy uh, Corporation, who owns Inforce, is an American company. Um, and they strive to do make all their products in the U.S. Pretty nice stuff. Um, don't really have much else to say about these guys. They're nice lights, especially for the price. You know, durable, lightweight, bright, good output. I mean, it's there's nothing to really put your finger on. The optic puts out a nice, nice beam. Good central hot, central hot spot with a, a nice corona as well, so you get a nice wide spill beam on it, and they really do work quite well. So check them out if you get a chance. You should be able to find these any number of places, gun stores, and so on. Um, go take a look at them, and uh, you know you might like them. Thanks for checking in. Have a good one.